All is not gold that glitters. From Vanity Fair, March 28, 1861. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. All is not gold that glitters. The city has been afflicted for a short time by a curious eruption, a breaking out of jewelry stores with large placards in their windows inscribed, Take your choice for one dollar. It is all very well to tell a fellow to take his choice, but there is in these windows nothing choice to take. Why should we or any man be anxious to possess various small fragments of brass stamped in fantastic forms and of no value except to the loser? These storekeepers announce their wares at rare bargains, but we believe, we know in fact, that this sort of bargain is greatly overdone. Spitenteifel, who is inclined to be metaphysical, says that the affair is based on a philosophical principle. Every man thinks that there are a few good articles and a great many bad ones in these one-dollar jewelry mills, and every man also thinks that he is shrewd enough to pick out the thing upon which the dealer makes no profit. Every man rushes in, then planks down his dollar and carries off a, what is it? A connecting link between brass and copper. It is suggested, however, that there is some gold in the rings, pins, brooches, lockets, pencil cases, etc., etc., of the one-dollar shops. Oreide, the composition of which they are made, is said to give off, in vapor, when assayed, a faintly infinitesimal quantity of gold that which remains is infinitesimally less. We know of a young lady to whom some gentleman, more benevolent than judicious, presented a chain, bought as a rare bargain for one dollar. The maiden, having no rooted antipathy to ornaments of any kind, twined the chain about her neck. At night, when making her toilette de nuit, she observed a dark, lead-colored ring about her snowy and swan-like throat, reminding her of Elsie Venner and some more of a young woman mentioned on page 55 of Aldrich's last volumes of poems, who had, quote, a dark blue scar on her throat, unquote. The next day, this young lady of the chain told a friend that the gold had been polished with whiting or something that blackened her neck. She was duly surprised to learn that it was only brass, and thundering poor brass at that. The one-dollar jewels are, in fact, much inferior to the average of decent bell pulls. The result of this explosion of jewelry is painful. Of course, it plays the dickens with the legitimate business, and the consequence is that all the respectable stores have to inaugurate a one-dollar department in which they sell as bad jewelry as anybody. The metropolis is inundated with it. The east side absolutely gleams, glitters, glows, glares, shines, shimmers, and scintillates with it. Every bookbinderess and prentice boy possesses a mass of trinkets that, in size and number at least, rival the crown jewels of many a kingdom. And they tell us that the country, the far and pleasing agricultural districts, swarm with similar shops. Woe, woe to the Arcadian loiterer of the coming summer! Amaryllis will shine in tawdry bracelets, and Daphnis will sport a hideous locket. A monstrous mosaic will rise and fall upon the bosom of Phyllis, and the sheep will gaze in wonder upon the gorgeous guard chain of their formosum pastor, Corridon. But when the summer has come and gone, when the moist air and earthy exhalations of the country shall have done their work, Amaryllis will look with disgust upon a pile of greenish and odorous things, stained and blackened by verdigris, and say with a regretful voice, These are my jewels. End of All Is Not Gold That Glitters Read by Leanne Howlett